the 30s. Today we wind up our great Hollywood wake-up tour on the set of Beverly Hills 90210. Good morning, everyone. I'm Joan London. And this is really the teen sensation of the 90s. And I'm Charles Gibson, and I'll be with you in a moment, but I had to get the door. <laughs> It is Friday, February 14th. Happy Valentine's yeah, Day to all of you. We come to you today from the Walsh family home. You can tell that because what the name right is on the, uh, on the mailbox. Set here in Beverly Hills. Joan's already given you the zip code and you'll hear it a lot during these two hours. Every Thursday night, about 10 million American households tune in to find out what's going on on these sets, find out what's happening to these well-to-do, with these well-to-do uh, California teenagers. This show has become very popular because of the work of some fine young actors like Jason yeah. Priestley, Luke Perry, and Shannon Doherty. And at various times during the show today, we're going to be talking to all of the cast members of Beverly Hills. Well, I'll do it. 90210. We'll do it many times. We are also going to move on to the issue of critical importance to the viewers of this program and to all American kids, and that's the quality of education in our country. And uh, we will hear from all of the Democratic presidential candidates as to how they would upgrade our failing education system. Also, the uh, trial of alleged mafia boss John Gotti has gotten underway in New York City, and we'll have an update on that. But first, we will go to New York for the news with Mike Schneider. Hi, Mike. Hi, Joan. Good morning, everyone. A case of tax cut fever is beginning to show up serious on Capitol Hill. And before long, we should know exactly how contagious this is. A new plan Democrats are working on right now in the House would cut taxes for the middle class. But the well-off? The plan would have the affluent pay more. Among other things, this plan would raise the top's tax rate. The rate now currently being paid at 31% would go up to 35%. Taxable incomes of over a million dollars would pay an extra 10% surcharge. There would be a 20% tax credit on Social Security taxes paid this year and next. The maximum credit would be $200 a person. And there would also be limited reductions in the capital gains tax. The first committee votes on the plan could come as early as this weekend. Former Senator Paul Tsongas remains the Democratic frontrunner with just four days to go now till New Hampshire's primary. He apparently is building his lead in the polls. The former frontrunner, Bill Clinton, has launched now a last-minute survival campaign. We get details from ABC's Mike Von Fremd. Clinton loaded up his schedule with five events in a near-frantic attempt to reach voters and pull out of his current nosedive in the polls. The most visible and expensive event was this live half-hour question-and-answer session. It was broadcast on New Hampshire's largest TV station with what the campaign claims were randomly picked voters. And so what I got to do in the next five days, is, like I said, I'm, I'm trying to do it tonight. I'm trying to give you the election vote. And if you say, look, this guy would be the best president, that is the loudest, most important decision you can make. But on the streets, an example of Clinton's waning support. I was a Clinton supporter, but I uh, have a hard time to support it out. Put it there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a difference between being opposed to the Vietnam War and being opposed to military service. Bob Keery said that in light of the draft controversy, he's now the best candidate to run against the president. And George Bush will not be able to attack me as a consequence of uh, trying to say to Americans that Bob Kerry is not patriotic. And to make the Democratic race even more interesting, the draft Cuomo movement has hit the airwaves with this TV commercial. Write in Mario Cuomo for America's Future. Cuomo has not encouraged the write-in campaign, but he hasn't discouraged it either. And some of the latest polls show the write-in movement is gaining strength. If that's true, the New Hampshire primary may actually increase rather than decrease the number of Democratic presidential contenders. Mike Von from ABC News, Manchester. Back on Capitol Hill now, a reporter for the Long Island newspaper Newsday is refusing to tell a Senate panel how he found out last summer that Anita Hill was accusing then-Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment. Senate investigators spent six hours yesterday trying to get that reporter, Timothy Phelps, to name his sources, but he wouldn't do it. I didn't keep count. I wish I had um, the, the hundreds of times that I said that I respectfully declined to answer um, any additional questions. Phelps says the First Amendment protects him and that he does not have to name his sources, but that stand could conceivably get him cited for contempt of Congress. Other big story this morning, the weather situation out of the Pacific. Two more big storms are gathering strength and picking up moisture now in the tropics and heading directly towards the battered coastline of California. The first storm is due to arrive over the weekend. The second one is expected early next week. And this has already been a week of record rain and tragic consequences as well. 
Details now from Southern California and ABC's Gary Shepard. Since the beginning of the week, some parts of the Los Angeles area have received an astonishing 13 inches of rain, almost as much as this region averages in an entire year. Even though the torrential downpours have eased, many districts remain flooded as the runoff continues, and a number of highways are still impassable. Repair crews are working around the clock to restore electric power to some neighborhoods. The body of a teenager was recovered from the Los Angeles River 24 hours after the youth, riding his bicycle, fell into the raging waters and was swept 10 miles downstream. More than 150 homes have been damaged by the flash floods, including this one in Malibu. Oh, my God! Most of the furniture in this apartment was swept away by floodwaters from a nearby creek that overflowed its banks. I suppose if I go down to the beach right now, I'll see some of it. The insurance industry says losses from property damage are already in the millions and are certain to go higher. Another powerful storm is expected to hit Southern California this weekend. Gary Shepard, ABC News, Los Angeles. Other news this morning, Donald Trump really kicked up a storm yesterday when he suggested that the boxer Mike Tyson should be allowed to stay out of jail in return for donations to rape victims, including the woman that Tyson is convicted of raping in Indianapolis. The way that Trump sees it, that would do more good than just sending Tyson to jail. Uh, I think the punishment can be much greater if, if this is imposed on Mike Tyson. Uh, tremendous amounts of money can be given to victims of rape, to victims of abuse, and I think it can be a lot stronger than throwing somebody into jail for a long period of time and really making him a ward of the state. But to some people, that sounds like Trump is pretty much suggesting that Tyson be allowed to buy his way out of jail. Besides, the prosecutor in Indianapolis will have none of it at all. Tyson's accuser, by the way, will be interviewed by Barbara Walters next Friday on 2020. And her face and her name will be seen on the cover of People magazine next week. One more thing from the boxing world right now. Buster Douglas, the only man who ever has beaten Mike Tyson in the ring, was arrested early today in Columbus, Ohio, on drunk driving charges. Finally, the Winter Olympics, the U.S. picking up another gold medal in freestyle skiing. Donna Weinbrecht of New Jersey was the winner there, the fastest time and the most style points. Weinbrecht is the best woman on this kind of course in the world. Now she's won eight of her nine competitions this year. The medal count right now stands this way. Austria continues to lead, 12 overall, just ahead of Germany, which has 10. The U.S. trails three total medals, but three, two of them, as we say, are gold ones, so you don't get any better than that. That's the news till now. Back out to California and Charlie and Spencer. Thanks very much, Mike. Seven minutes after the hour. Spencer here. We're in the Walsh family kitchen. That's right. Spencer's still looking for a cup of coffee, as he has been uh, all week long. Searching that thing all week long. And still looking for a clear weather forecast That's here right. in California. I think I'll find the Holy Grail before I find the clear weather forecast <laughs> or the cup of coffee. <laughs> well, let's go to the maps, Charlie. I'll show you what's developing and what's headed in California's direction for the weekend. One more big storm. Now, today may not be a bad day in California, as you can see by way of satellite here. Skies are generally clear and have been during the overnight hours, but one more big wave of Pacific moisture is pushing towards the coast, and by late Friday night, late tonight, or early tomorrow, it'll move onshore, and this could be as big a rainstorm as California has had all week long. That certainly won't help things any because there's been severe and deadly flooding. Today's outlook calls for mostly sunny skies, though, in the southwest. It'll be rainy and snowy up in the northwest. Coastal northern California, Oregon, and Washington state will have rainfall, snow farther inland. Heavy rainfall in the mid and lower Mississippi Valley, some light snow up in the plains, northern plains. The east coast will be mostly sunny, except the extreme northeast, northern New England, could see some snowfall. That's a look at the national weather, and here's a look at the weather where you are. Good morning and happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I'm Channel 5 meteorologist Rick Mitchell. We have a soggy day ahead of us. It will be cloudy with rain arriving. Could start off as a touch of freezing drizzle early this morning. Temperatures today will be in the 30s. And joining me now in the Walsh kitchen is Carol Potter, who plays Cindy Walsh, the mother of uh, Brandon and Brenda on Beverly Hills 902105683766. That's right. <laughs> Whatever that How number is, I'm just fine. Nice Welcome to, to my kitchen. Welcome to sunny California. Well, oh, sunny California. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. It's you nice to be here. You did a good week, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I did. Do you think you can help me out? Yes, you know, all week long, I understand I've, you've been looking for a cup of coffee, I and I am I am the hostess par excellence. I would love to provide you with a cup of coffee. You've got it? Yes. She's got it. I can't believe it. All week long. With our, I've been our little family mugs here that Incredible. we drink our coffee and tea out of. Carol? On our very own coffee maker. Just like your TV character, Cindy, you do understand. Yes. Thank you so much, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. We'll have more weather in the next half hour. Joan? 
All right, thank you, Spencer. Hollywood has a long tradition of glamorizing the mob with the Godfather movies and movies like Goodfellas and Bugsy. But right now, a real-life mob melodrama is getting underway in New York City. The John Gotti trial has all the ingredients of really a Martin Scorsese movie. And they are an alleged crime boss accused of racketeering and murder, hours of incriminating wiretap evidence, a key prosecution witness who has himself been involved in some 19 murders, and the drama is now playing in and around the Brooklyn County Courthouse, where right now standing by is New York Newsday Pulitzer Prize winning columnist Jimmy Breslin. And good morning, Jimmy. Good morning, Joan. And I listened uh, with interest to your introduction, and uh, I would respectfully disagree. I think this is the trial that will kill gangster movies in America. And I'll really? explain. Really? Yes. Absolutely. The real thing is better, huh? Uh, the real thing is dreadfully boring and oh, it is. Uh, frightfully small and not worth your interest, really. Upstairs here, Joan, on the fourth floor, we have the trial of John Gotti, the new Capone, the new Torrio, the great boss of the Mafia, as it's known. But if you go just to the other side of this court building, it begins the borough of Brooklyn in the city of New York and you run for miles and miles of streets starting directly here of people living in overwhelming sadness in great difficulty without much hope women mostly with small children fighting life if you were to take a list of the things that matter in the borough of brooklyn and keep an accurate list you would have no room at the bottom for the name of john gotti because no matter what happens to him in this trial, he can be convicted. It will not change one breath of living in the borough of Brooklyn. But However, changes... in the world of the media where we reside, media being the plural of mediocre, he's tremendously <laughs> important for entertainment. Magnificent. We but... can have the press, the FBI. They need jobs, these agents. There's no more Russian spies to follow. They follow John Gotti. Uh, you have the judge, can he most? The prosecutor can accuse, and the lawyer can defend. <clears throat> it's a great, uh, that, for that, it's a great scene. And you could have some, you have some side things that do give you some uh, joy, such as uh, Mr. Gotti in the first row. As he enters, there are eight people from his organization in the first row, and they stand. And they remain standing until John Gotti sits at the defense table. Then they sit. However, I have a complaint about them. Their appearance yesterday was hardly in keeping with the Gotti group in crime. They're usually much better dressed. I thought these people were a little bit in disarray, and I didn't like it, and I think it should be changed. Well, it seems, Jimmy, that things have kind of slipped away in the yes. whole organized crime family yes, as, the, as police have really made inroads. However, they don't call this guy Teflon Don for nothing because he's gotten off three times. Three times up, three times he's gotten off. A lot of people say that the jurors are afraid of, of, uh, of vengeance by the mob and they aren't going to get him. Do they, do they have a better case this time? He had, he had three times he got away on, and the cases were yeah. very poor and he should have got away. Uh, he should have been allowed out. In fact, I think that's the danger that we begin to sacrifice our rights in the quest to uh, uh, put this one fellow in jail. I'm more concerned about my own liberties than I am about John Gotti's. I don't care much for Mr. Gotti. I don't think. But these aren't insignificant charges, Jimmy. I mean, we're talking oh, well, about could... five different murder oh, they... charges here. No, no, eighteen. They murdered. Yeah. Uh, they murdered nineteen uh, uh, oh, fellows. Oh, total, sure. Yeah, uh, uh, probably a lot more. I mean, we've got to give them credit where credit is due. Well, is this I prosecution think they more witness? Than 19 people. Uh, is this prosecution witness going to be any good? I mean, because Mr. he's been involved in so many murders himself. Uh, Mr. Gravano is a genius and uh, uh, I don't know what he's got to say. I know I would rather have him as a witness against me than sitting alongside me as a, as a co-defendant. Uh, We're going to get back man. to you, Jimmy, as this whole thing unfolds. We'll see the, le the real life mob Well, there drama. is one. I'd like to say one thing to I the gotta, lawyer. Sorry, Jimmy, I've got to jump out here because I'm up against the clock, against a time problem. But we'll be back with you. We'll check back. about Thanks. English grammar? Okay, I've got to jump out, Jimmy. Sorry. We'll be back in just a moment.
by design. We have over 500 styles of sofas and chairs and over 2,500 fabrics to put on our sofas and chairs. In fact, if we showed you all the different combinations you'll find at Sofas by Design, this commercial would last 14 days. Sofas by Design. Even an additional 15 to 30 percent off sofas and add a sleeper for only $199. Sofas by Design. Custom furniture in about 30 days. It's wild. It's crazy. It's Burlington Coat Factory's Washington's birthday sale. Today through Monday. Great looking dresses. An unbelievable $19.90. Executive suits. A ridiculous $89.90. Fashion leather jackets and bombers. $69.90 to $99.90. Good looking top coats. $49.90 to $99.90. Beautiful leather handbags. A steal at $14.99. Drop everything and come running. Burlington Coat Factory's wild and crazy Washington's birthday sale. Even if you don't subscribe to the Des Moines Register, you've probably noticed that it's been redesigned, so it's easier than ever to find just what you're looking for. And you may have noticed that the Register has expanded its local news coverage, so you can keep up with what's happening in Des Moines. But you may not know that you can get this neat clock free when you pay for a 13-week subscription. To subscribe, call 284-8311. Get me the uh, Des Moines Register. The Des Moines Register. Just what you're looking for. It's sale time at the Wiley Eye Care Centers. Buy a pair of single vision or bifocal glasses and we'll give you $30 off. If your purchase is trifocals, $35 off. And would you believe, $40 off progressive lenses, including Verilux. Our lenses are precision ground, manufactured in the Wiley Lens Lab by Wiley professionals to perfection. When it comes to fit, quality, price, and guarantee, it is always, and will continue to be, the Wiley Eye Care Centers. At Wiley's, the most important person is you. Come see us. Our next half hour, the boys of Beverly Hills 90210. 17 minutes after the hour, I'm here in the hallway of West Beverly High. This, of course, is the center of action on Beverly Hills 90210. This school is very lucky as it's depicted it as bright students, dedicated teachers, and good facilities. But the reality is that American education in most parts of the country is in trouble. The American education system and how to fix it is the final topic this morning in our week-long series with the Democratic presidential candidates. What is the first thing you would do to improve education in this country? Health and education are inextricably entwined. When you provide maternal and child health care programs so that a woman has a healthy baby, that's part of education. When you ensure that those children have adequate nutrition services and health care early in life, that's part of education. So first, early, early childhood education. Secondly, let's make the federal government a partner with primary and secondary schools. The federal government ought to provide the equipment, the computers, the science labs, the chemistry labs, the equipment, the communications, fiber optics or star schools equipment, so that every school has the best possible equipment. Anybody who's looked at education understands that if you don't get to a child before the kindergarten, that much of that child's life has already been determined. So I would say the one, if there was only one program, that we can focus on full funding of Head Start would be that program. But I think the other discussion is we have to talk about is value in education. And the United States is fundamentally an anti-intellectual society. We do not value education the way the Europeans do. You know, for example, I spent two years in the Peace Corps, a so-called so primitive nation. But in Ethiopia, when I was there, learning had value. If you were a teacher, you were honored but being a teacher. So the whole process of learning was given by society a, a standard, a status. Whereas in the United States, if you're a teacher, you're not honored the way you should be. Learning is not honored. I intend as President of the United States to, report, to support uh, systemic reform similar to what occurred in, in Kentucky under the leadership of uh, many state leaders, uh, systemic reform that matches responsibility with authority at the local level, that is outcome-based, that uses technology a, a, a lot and, it, and just simply says that every child uh, can learn a lot more and every child needs an advocate. We will also free up resources so, so we can fully fund Head Start. I think most of the Democrats are talking about it. Head Start, uh, more adequate child care, and, and maybe one that has been missed is the incredible potential of, of technology, of computers and educational software. We've got to stop the spreading ignorance and it takes the same level uh, of commitment 
that you see over in the Pentagon, and you don't have that over at the Department of Education. I would present a sweeping education program, by far the best uh, ever presented in this country's history, that, among other things, would make access to college education universal. We should have full funding for Head Start and a comprehensive preschool network for all kids who need it. We should have a, an apprenticeship program for the young people who don't want to go to college but don't want to be in debt in jobs. So many kids get out of high school and go into jobs with declining incomes because we have stubbornly refused to have a school-to-work transition that trains them for better jobs. Would you support a standardized national test for students? How do you account for, for example, uh, different uh, backgrounds of students, especially new Americans, uh, the younger generation that maybe they haven't spoken English for a long time, and if you give a test in English that's English-based, they may be smart, they may be competent, but they may not understand the test. So if you can manage a test that would cut across those lines, I see nothing wrong with it. You have to hold people to some standard, and if you have national testing, you know, whether that's fair or unfair, at least there is some goal that people can work towards. I don't favor a single national examination. We can have uh, uniformity in examination across school districts and across state lines, but I don't favor a single national examination. We, as a society, ought to know what, what our kids are learning, and a national test at, that aims at what we expect an American citizen to be. And I wouldn't limit it to science and math. I'd include the arts. There should be national standards and a national examination system to measure whether our children are meeting those standards. Do you support the use of vouchers that can be used to attend any school a student chooses? No, but in Iowa we've had a program, Minnesota and other states, we've had programs where in the public school system, if you want to take your kid out of your school in your district and send, it, uh, send your child somewhere else, that was perfectly permissible. You can do it like I think once during high school rather than shifting around all the time. I find that, that there's nothing wrong with that. I'm willing to try a voucher system in some place, see how it works. If it works without destroying the public school system, then we've learned something from that. I have supported some choice. Uh, we've got choice in Nebraska where people can choose uh, to go from one district to another, so I'm not ideologically opposed to it. It can work, but it, there are times, and we've seen it uh, in our state, in the inner city, where choice makes things worse, not better. I like private schools, I went to parochial schools as well as Yale Law School, and I'd sure like to find a way to help them. But with this present uh, situation in public schools, uh, at this point, uh, I believe you should have uh, choice within the public schools, and we ought to focus our effort there. I think parents should have public school choice. I don't favor private vouchers. But I think there should be a choice program within public schools, within districts, and across districts with protections against discrimination based on race and income. The Democratic candidates on education, the New Hampshire primary is next Tuesday. We'll be there. And Good Morning America continues. Introducing appetizer and dessert shells. Bend me, shape me, any way you want me, long as you love me, it's all right. Twist me, bake me, any way you want me, you got a crunchy, crispy delight. New appetizer and dessert shells bake up so crispy, so easy, so go ahead. Fill me, drape me, any way you want me. New appetizer and dessert shells from Azteca. As long as you love me, it's all right. You're invited once again to join us at Mr. B for our twice a year clearance sale. You'll discover savings throughout the store during this special clearance event. Now at Mr. B, you'll save on suits and sport coats by Hard Chapter Marks, Corbin, Austin Reed, and Southampton. You'll find a complete selection of women's suits, blazers, blouses, and casual clothing. And as always, every purchase is tailored to fit.